Hello and welcome to the Splendor tutorial brought to you by Louis Act. My name is Emmanuel Lukafo and I hope you guys like guys are doing well. Today we'll be looking at constraints inside Blender and today I'm going to be showing you guys all the constraints inside Blender. So we're going really big guys. So if you've never used constraint or you've not, you're not familiar with it, basically constraint means um, set of rules which you can apply to an object to tell it to behave in a certain way So this set of rules come really handy because it speeds up the your workflow when you're trying to animate And it just give color looking stuff and makes it feel even more realistic So that's what we're trying to do today uh, So let's start with the first constraint and that's a copy location constraint So this allows you to copy the location of said target object so in this instance we want to select the cube and now this sphere is going to copy the location of the cube and if we move it it's going to move along and you could restrict certain axis in case you don't want that axis to follow the set target and so we can move this now and it's not going to follow the x axis but it's going to follow the y and the z axis you also have the ability to affect the space but when you're dealing with objects you want to work mainly with world space and when you're dealing with amateurs and bones you want to work mainly with local space and you could affect the influence and yeah so that's that um number two we want to go to the copy rotation constraint so for this um this is just like the copy location constraint but this time it's rotation so we can select the cube as a target object and once we rotate it the sphere is going to copy the rotation of the cube and yeah so that's that same thing applies to this for the other parameters so we could also do copy scale and it does the same thing so it can copy the scale and you can restrict stuff you can um, increase the power of it so this is actually a new feature future, uh, feature. <laughs> can't speak again um, you could also enable make uniform so those are new cool new features okay so let's keep going so number for copy transformation so this is just basically copying the rotation scale and location of everything so as you can see it's just copying everything is basically like parenting um so that's that uh, let's start going to the cold ones now so the first cold one we're going to look into is the limits distance so this is really cool so now i'm just going to select the target which is the cube and watch this this is going to follow the cube every, anywhere it goes so you could even play with how much distance you want the sphere to, how much distance you want the cube to go before the sphere full along so if we set this to like 10 and we move this cube is when it reach 10 meters then the sphere will fall along so this is really cool and there are lots of parameters there which you could play with and just play um test it out for yourself so the next one will be the limit location so this doesn't need any target object let's say you want to limit the location of certain axes so for this instance if we limit the x location we can move this object in the x axis um it's just going to move in the other axis so that's that for the limit um, location then same thing applies to the limit rotation It's going to limit the rotation in certain axis um, so let's keep going um, same thing with the scale so I'm not going to cover that so let's do maintain volume so this is also cool um, this makes uh, this enables you when, um, no matter how, when you scale this object it tries to maintain the volume that creates a nice squash and stretch so it always makes sure that it always remains same um, diameters I don't know okay so that's that the next one is the transformation so this is the, one of the most powerful constraints we have here in blender so let's go straight into it so we select a target target object um, which is the cube and we can create complex um, settings that makes this um, sphere behave in certain way so for instance if we select the sphere where we have the constraint and the source in this instance is going to be the cube um, which we want to trigger action so we want when we this cube moves um we're going to trigger a new action for onto the sphere so let's say when this cube move in the x axis negative point one and also in the x axis uh, negative uh, positive point one okay we want this cube to rotate um in the z axis so it's rotate so we'll set this to negative 360 and set this to positive 360 so we're getting like a spin clock motion 
So now if we move this, nothing happens because it's quite um, tricky. This constraint is powerful, but yeah, tricky. Um, so you want to make sure you enable extrapolate, especially if you want it to keep going forever. If you have this, if you don't have that checked, it's, it's going to just rotate just once. So you want it to just keep going. Okay, so um, right now nothing is happening. Um, so let's fix that. Most of the times, when once this constraint is not working, what you just need to play with is the source um, to destination mapping. So um, most of the times, there's no like said stuff. You just need to switch them around until um, it starts working. Probably there's a right way to go about this, but the way I figured it out is just play around with it. So I'm just going to switch stuff around. And you will notice now as I move this cube, this sphere is rotating. So that, um, that's good. So you could apply multiple um, constraint and multiple instru inst instruction for this transformation constraint. Um, so maybe if you want me to focus on that, uh, like in a separate tutorial, let me know in the comment and I'm going to do that. So we'll um, skip this transform cache and let's go to clamp to. I really like this clamp to um, constraint. So for that, we'll add a curve, Bezier curve. So this is going to restrict every motion of the sphere to the part of the curve. So if we place this here and set the target to be the curve, um, now you will notice if I try to move this, it can move in any axis except um, towards or around this. It can only move in this part. Okay. So you could make it cyclic. That means once it gets to the um, end, it's going to return back to the front, um, to the starting position. So we could add more. So yeah, that's the clamp to constraint. So since we, um, let's do the dump track. So for this, oh, let's do that again. So dump track. So we'll select the target object, which is the cube. And what this does is just makes um, the object follow the target object so this is really good for uh, when you want to create like camera target that you just set up an empty and make use the dump track to control the point facing point of the camera so that's that um, the next is the lock track so um, for this the lock track is kind of like the dump track it acts the same way most times so, but it's not moving as crazy as the damn track. So for this instance, um, it's only going to rotate in the Y axis. So if you could switch this to rotate, um, if it's available, of course. So it's rotating certain ways. Um, so that's that, you want to play with it more. Um, now is we have the stretch too. So we set the target object to the cube. And now this sphere is going to stretch, stretch towards um, the cube so this is used to create like squash and stretch um, animation so you could also play with um, different things to even get more type of effect with it if you wanted to stretch even further quickly so you cannot achieve that so let's delete that um, now let's um, try another one so the next one is track to so we'll select our target object and now this sphere we track to this cube so it's kind of like a dump stamp. Well, it kind of works the same way, but probably they have different uses. So you want to play with them. And if it works for your need, you want to use that. So we'll be skipping the action amateur and let's go to the child of this child of is like a parent um, constraint. So it's most times I use, I use this constraint to animate when the character is trying to pick stuff up. Okay. So let's select the okay for this time we'll select the sphere and you do you can do clear inverse inverse now this is going to be the the cube is now the child of this sphere and you can restrict stuff you can tell it to totally follow it when it rotates and stuff like that so that's that the next one is the pivot so I, you, if you notice, I skipped the follow part because it's quite unpredictable and I don't want to do that in a tutorial setting. Uh, probably if you want to really know about that, you can leave it, it in the comment. Like if you, those constraints that you really want to know in depth about, let me know in the um, comment and I will make a separate tutorial for that. 
Okay, so for the pivot, um, we set the cube, and for this, I always set it to always. That means now when I rotate this, it's going to use this cube as its pivot. So if it's like this, the cube will always be its pivot. So there are other parameters which you play with, so you could restrict it to move in certain axis. Uh, but if you just set it to always, it's just going to work right up the back. So I think we're almost to the end and the final second to the last one will be floor. Oh, I skipped this really cool one. So floor. What this basically means is if I move this, oh, okay. Um, for this, you need to set the axis you want the effect to happen. So for this, I'm going to set in the, in the X axis. That means if I move this and once this origin point comes in contact with this sphere, um, th this kind of a um, parent and child relationship triggers and now follows it. So you could set the origin to just the tip. And now, once you just come there, you can see it moves. So that's that for the floor. And now the final one, which is shrink wrap. So this is not going to really liter literally shrink wrap the model like the modifier does. Um, but this um, is also cool. So once you move this, you get this kind of floaty effect. So you can play with most of the parameters and try inside, it gives a different result. If you try um, project, it gives a different result. So you want to play with different uh, parameters to really test it out for yourself. But my goal in this tutorial was just to introduce you guys to it. So if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Please like this video and subscribe if you're not subscribed yet so you don't miss uh, my future videos. Okay, so bye-bye for now. See you next time.